very warm welcome to Dr. Basha Mukherjee, aka Miss England. Hello, Basha. Welcome to the program. Hello. You threw me off there with the Savi Madara music video. I <laughs> those. Just to show sure I've done my homework, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, the little things can be hidden when it comes to social media. Anyway, welcome to the Great Big Indian Wellness Show. Thank you very much, Adi, for taking time out to join us today. We're going to be talking about diabetes, but just before I do that, I'm ever so excited about talking about you and your career. Uh, you graduated as a doctor, and if I'm not mistaken, a day after you graduated, you won the title of Miss England. Am I correct? So it was something like, I was supposed to start my first day at work the very next morning after the finals of Miss England. So I went straight from the finals, which which happened actually after midnight. I got crowned and I went straight from there that same night. I took a train to my uh, my job at the hospital for the next morning. <laughs> yeah. And I bet you walked in there like a superstar and everybody's saying, oh, look, look, we've got Miss England here. Now, actually, Dr. Basha Mukherjee is who I am. So it must have been a very strange experience for you. It, it really was, uh, mainly because I was not at all expecting it. And um it was very hectic as well. So that's that's yeah. a story for another day in terms of what a strange 24 hours I had. Um, but I think the journey has been very, uh, very interesting and very worthwhile. So I'm very grateful for it. Uh, it's really quite surreal, actually. We're here to talk about diabetes today, a subject very close to your heart and something that you've been supporting, and not only through all the many charities that you support, but also as a doctor as well. So let's talk about diabetes. What's it all about? Because there's not just one type of diabetes. There's diabetes type one and there's type two. Explain the myths behind that to us. Um, so there, there are, as you said, two types of diabetes. One is when your pancreas stops working. So you stop producing the hormone insulin, which helps to keep your blood sugar in control. And everyone's blood sugar needs to be in a very specific range for us to be healthy, especially in the blood, because most of the sugar in our body gets used up by our cells. The blood sugar needs to be within a specific range. Type one is actually only 10% of the total amount of diabetes, which we still haven't got a cure for type one diabetes. It's, uh, you know, it comes on very suddenly for most people, especially young people, it starts and it's mainly autoimmune, Type 2 is the preventable type, and it makes up 90% of all diabetes. And diabetes is one of the highest in our um, ethnic minority group, South Asians. It's so, so common. We're four times more likely than Caucasians. Um, and it's one of the most common illnesses, preventable illnesses uh, in modern society, both in the West and in the East, in India, Pakistan, and all those countries as well. And it, it comes from the body not being able to cope with the amount of sugar that's in your blood, because over time, you've chucked so much sugar in your blood from eating sugar, from eating carbs, your lifestyle, genetic factors, that your body is just unable, that insulin is just unable to control that blood sugar anymore. So when it comes to the different types of diabetes, how do we actually know and understand that we've actually got diabetes and the symptoms of it? So um, I would like to focus mainly on type 2 diabetes because, um, as I said, it's, it's the preventable type and it's something that more people need to know about um, so we can prevent it. Um, one of the really early signs that you may notice, even as a young person, someone in your 20s, is when you get irritable or hangry. You know, when you've not eaten for a little while, you absolutely get so angry and starving that that whole thing, that actually is a very early sign of okay, you developing diabetes later. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Carry on. 
but with older age, obviously, when uh, when you're sort of in your 40s and 50s, the signs would be, you know, re feeling really thirsty, um, needing to go to the toilet more often. Number one, that is. Um, again, irritability, um, feeling um, like mind fog, not being able to function if you've not had something to eat. Um, and, and another thing, later on in the day, you start, you might start to notice that you can't see very well. Like your eyes start to get a bit blurry. And that's because there's, there's so much sugar milling around in all the fluids in your body. There's mm. more sugar in, in your eyes as well. So you can't see very well as well. That's a sign as well. Uh, Basha, when it comes to eating sugar, you mentioned that in our conversation, which you've explained very well, may I add. But the thing is, do we then suddenly just stop eating sugar? Because, forgive me for saying, but sugar is also an essential part of our metabolism, is it not? It is. It, it is very true. But um, we have to think about caveman days. We did not have access to sugar um, as it is now available. The sugar sort of craze in the world actually came after the slave trade when sugar was able to be harvested and, you know, very easily grown with sugar cane, etc., and it was a business essentially. And, and it is one of the biggest businesses in the whole world. The food industry is ruled by the sugar industry. Um, and we are the ones that are suffering for the cost, uh, basically. Um, okay. And I want to say, you're, you're Sikh, aren't you? Yes, I am. So, um, so you know about prashad uh, in, in the Godwaras that is given, um, and it has, um, you know, the sweet prashad that is given. Now, that whole concept came from the fact that sweet treats were not readily available. And you, people would go to the Godwara just to get um, a little treat. And the prashad used to be a treat. And now it's not just restricted to just a treat. It's now eaten everywhere. It's become a way of life. Very yeah. easy access to it, um, uh, and that is the problem: how easily accessible it is, how cheap sugar is, and you have to think for for sugar to be that cheap, what a big business it must be. You know, um, I can talk about this for hours, <laughs> <laughs> and we're keen to hear that too. This is the Great Big Indian Wellness Show, and uh, I'm Tony Patty talking with Dr. Basha Mukherjee today, aka Miss England as well. We're talking about diabetes. Basha, you mentioned that diabetes causes symptoms um, and the treatments that are involved to treat it. And we talk about type 1, type 2, essentially. And it can cause damage to your blood vessels, which increases the risk of developing heart and circulatory uh, diseases as well. Diabetes is a condition that causes high levels of glucose, uh, sugar, which is what you've just been telling us about in your blood. So in terms of controlling that, you, I mean, you say it's so readily available, you can go down to the shops and buy a quick bar of chocolate and have a quick sugar fix, if you like. But in terms of controlling it mentally, psychosomatically, it's easier said than done, isn't it? Because, you know, there's sometimes you feel, oh, I'm working ever so hard. I need to grab a quick can of fizzy pop or whatever, which has got a very high sugar content in it. Um, and we get our sugar fixed that way. It's so easily available. But how we how do we program our minds into saying to ourselves, no, we don't actually need that. Just grab some water instead. I think the first thing to think about is why. Why do we feel that um, need for sugar? Hmm. And that is because we are addicts. And sugar is an addictive substance. It actually activates the same part of your brain as drugs do, okay? It actually makes our happy receptors glow up like this when we consume sugar. That's the, the endorphin, same thing the that endorphins, the, the endorphins have a field day. Yes, exactly. And sugar has psychosomatic effects. It actually, it is mind-altering, and it's an addictive substance. And the reason why we feel the need to replenish that sugar is it's an addict, an addict needing it, uh, their fix, essentially. And the way to curb that, obviously, we, we, we can talk about all the ways that diabetics, once you've actually developed diabetes, there's drugs, etc., loads of things you can do. 
But, you, spoke, you spoke briefly about the community earlier on and how our community is affected and how easily through Prashad and uh, religious meetings, uh, Prashad. No, uh, so Prashad, I, I was saying that 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 was a time, uh, you know, that, that as a concept, but uh, let's talk about how sugar rules over our life day to day and for us to be able to make those changes we actually have to employ tactics that people with other addictions try to do so if you think along those lines you'd be able to let's, sustain let's that to, longer yeah absolutely right let's go into some detail about that explain that to us Basha. so um so i i've worked in mental health facilities as well some of the things that we do to curb any kind of addiction is um find a, a substitution okay so that'll be a very very quick you know easy one to do for most people a lot of people now are already um finding uh you know alternatives to sugar uh, you can use um you know uh things like uh stevia etc that's a primary thing secondly it's about changing your environment I've noticed when there's sugar available around me, I crave it more. Um, so, you know, I always say out of sight, out of mind. Yes. Help it, <laughs> avoid those, uh, you know, aisles in a supermarket where you and and supermarkets, a whole food business is made to for us to cave in, by the way. You know, if, as soon as you walk into a supermarket, you'll see donuts, everything right lined up right in front of us. There's sweets and chocolates right as you're exiting, just as you're, uh, you know, checking out. You've got to think, why are they there? They're there to remind you that you need it, especially, you know, in any, um, you know, hospital, anywhere you go. They've got vending machines with chocolates in it, not fruits, chocolates, because they last longer. Yes. And, you know, uh, it's there. It's a visual aid to remind people, oh, you need this. And it's all part of the food business mindset that's trying to get us, get us to cave into it. So change your environment. Avoid going into certain supermarkets that trigger you. Go into those aisles. Try, if you can, shop at farmer's markets or smaller places where they don't have that kind of um, stimuli Temptation. around you. Not so many temptations so it's glaring at you. Yes. And, you know, in your house as well, um, if you can have, for example, we've I've completely stopped buying um, like sugary treats and snack items. Unfortunately, though, they, I have access to it at work. And that's where I really struggle. And I feel like I have my worst um, sort of sugar moments when mm. I'm at work in the NHS, funnily enough. Um, <laughs> because it's right there. There's nothing stopping it from being there. No, no. This is the so great big thing. Do it with other people. Do it yeah. together with your family. And I Indeed, think that yes. is the most powerful thing. This is the Great Big Indian Wellness Show. We're talking to Dr. Basha Mukherjee, uh, also Miss England. Um, and you've uh, brought me very nicely, whilst we're talking about sugar and the intake of sugar, about food and diet and eating a balanced diet. Basha, tell us a little bit about that, because eating a healthy, balanced diet is an important part of maintaining good health, right? I can actually help you feel your best as well while you're at it. Yes. And I was, as I was just mentioning, um, the third element of um, of beating an addiction is to do it together, you know, with like alcohols mm. and anonymous, etc. It's always better when you make a change and do it as part of a group. And what better group than your family? Um, South Asians, one of the best things that we have is our family unit. Making a change as a family when it comes to diet is the most sustainable. Um, South Asians are grainitarians. We're not even vegetarians, we're grainitarians. And I always say this to my mum, that you know why there are so many people in uh, South Asian subcontinent who are able to sustain a non-veg life, I mean, a vegetarian life? That's because we've got the main thing that is our addiction, which is the carbs. Yes. <laughs> we are so heavily reliant on carbs. And, 
you know, most people will probably find it easier to give up on meat and any other addiction than carbs. And carbs, uh, yeah. 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 So what, 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 about, what about your fruit and vegetables and your five a day that we've been hearing so much about over the years? So um, believe it or not, you get almost all your nutrition from plant plants essentially so if you can make majority of your meal plants then you you're bound to get as much nutrition as you need um so i would say aim for half a plate of green we've heard this so many times in the nhs already and the way to aim for that is not just to go for the typical old um you know salad and things like that but most people are like what how do you even eat this and mm. It tastes nice. Most people are, they can only do it for a short amount of time. And I say to that is that incorporate those vegetables in everything. So one thing my mom does, she actually puts in vegetables into the roti dough as well. And she puts seeds in there and nuts in it as well. So every, all these little ways to incorporate plant-based things into your plate um by so making you're getting it all the nutrients right. yes yeah you're getting all the nutrients through that anyway and something that you enjoy eating anyway um and something that we've been brought up with what a, what a splendid idea uh, in terms of beans pulses fish eggs meat and other proteins i know you touched this briefly earlier on but uh, in our diets yes we do have beans we do have pulses we have dal and things like that but fish eggs meat and other proteins what about that um, so um, I understand that uh, a lot of South Asians will, um, you know, be varied on that scale of how what kind of meats they eat. And they might have other restrictions on meat as well. I say the way I I'm, I I eat most meats besides beef and pork. The way I design my plate is two portions, so two handful portions of greens one handful portion of uh, of any kind of meat or fish or anything like that so your mm. portion of vegetable needs to be always double the portion of your meat essentially uh because the vegetables have the vitamins and minerals that help to actually assimilate and get all the nutrients from the proteins and the last quarter of your plate try to fill it with other things like for example yogurt we love our yogurt and raita, etc. So have your yogurt and squeeze a little bit of carbs just in that little extra portion just to get through everything else. <laughs> I love the way you've done that. And it's something going to stick in my mind for a long, long time. I'm going to try that. Um, now, uh, right here on the Great Big Indian Wellness Show, as we talk about diabetes today, what happens if we actually ignore the symptoms, ignore the advice that you've been sharing with us today, and what can we do from now on to actually avoid diabetes? Perhaps we have brought up in a certain way, eating perhaps all the wrong foods because of family lifestyle, but perhaps midway through life, we want to have a lifestyle change. Is it too late? It is never too late to make a change. The thing about diabetes is that it is a change that starts in your body from your birth, that resistance to sugar and your body's inability to cope with sugar. It starts from literally when you're a child. So that change, the earlier it is made, the better. And the way to sustain it is to spread the knowledge i keep telling this to everyone see one do one teach one tell others anything you know anything you learn teach others about it as well not preach but you know share that knowledge um you know in our south asian community we talk we talk about cricket we talk about so many other things but i think health is a topic that most people do not like to talk about yeah. most people do not like to come front like come forward and say you know what this is what my doctor said and you know you know my blood sugar levels are not quite right or i'm taking this medication no one talks about it but our health is the only thing that will take us, carry us. Our bodies are the only thing that will last. Nothing else is going to take us through. You know, we'll live with this pain, suffering, uh, good youth, etc. So it's really important to start that conversation, that dialogue between families, between friends. Um, and when you talk about it, you'll notice that actually 
you're more mindful of what you're eating. You're thinking about it more as well. And that's that, that's the change, the thinking about it, thinking about what you're doing, what your actions are. Basha, are there such things as healthcare professionals who work with contributing to diabetes treatment, care and research as well? And if so, um, people might not want to talk about it or live in denial, if you like. Some people do. But is there such help available to people? And if so, where do they go? So the internet is your best friend. There is so much knowledge out there. There are so many YouTubers who are making content. Um, all you have to do is, uh, you know, get that mindset of, I want to find out more. And when you seek out knowledge, it is right there. One of the most reliable sources for, of information for diabetes, especially, is the NHS website or Diabetes UK. Diabetes UK is a charity that I work with. Um, but honestly, the, so you can find information all over the internet about this topic. What about those people in the last few closing minutes that we have together, Basha, about people putting type 2 diabetes into remission and recovering? Particularly, we've been through a very difficult time with a, co a coronavirus uh, uh, situation that we've had uh, and COVID. And I guess people have been less active, but and, and that's contributed to perhaps increasing levels of diabetes within people. But those people who are conscious about beating this and going into remission, what are the steps that they need to take? Um, so, OK, um, if you really, truly are committed to want to reverse diabetes, then, um, as I said, change your environment. As I, that's one of the first steps. Number two, educate yourself. The more you learn, the more you surround yourself with a particular message. Don't eat this or eat this or eat, do this, do this. You're going to actually end up following those steps and actually it'll become more of your lifestyle. Um, so it's about changing your mindset and being committed to, you know, it's the same as if you want to become a doctor, you've got to day in, day out, think about that thing. So making those thoughtful um, decisions, mindful decisions every single day, that's what it's about, consistently making choices every single day. Um, and, and trust me, the most powerful of this whole journey is being able to make small changes in your loved one's lives as well. Mm -hmm. So by all means, do that. As I've said, see one, do one, teach one, and you will be able to sustain it. It's all about discipline, self-discipline as well. Basho, I'm going to ask you now to put your Miss England crown on, and I'm going to throw some questions at you and give me the most honest, honest answer that you can, okay? On a scale of one to 10, how weird are you? Um, 10. <laughs> oh, yes. okay be careful how you answer that okay all right what are you not very good at i'm not very good at keeping my space tidy i'm so okay. disorganized yeah okay well there's a question that's uh, going to be complimenting this one in a moment um tell me something that's true that almost nobody else agrees with you on um I think the fact that um, nobody agrees with me that <laughs> I don't know. It's really tough. Gotcha. Because I want to OK, all right, let's move on. Next question. Final question. A room, desk and car. Which do you clean first? Probably desk, that desk, because I usually film in front of that one, but that's it. <laughs> You're so organised. And on that note, uh, Dr. Basha Mukherjee, Miss England, thank you very much for talking to us today right here on the Great Big Indian Wellness Show. It's been a privilege and a pleasure, and I hope we'll have the pleasure of your company again very soon right here on iGlobal. Thank you so much. Thank you.